What's up, family? Thank you for tuning in to the Dream Nation podcast. My name is Casanova. I'll be your host, and I'm excited to be bringing to you entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and trailblazers from around the world. Stay locked in with us because we're about to go on a journey that will change your life. What's up, Dream Nation? We are back again. In today's episode, we have my brother, Mr. Mark Savant, on the show. Mark, you want to go ahead and say what's up to Dream Nation? Yo, what is up, Dream Nation? What's up, Casanova? Hope you're having a beautiful day. Excited to talk shop today and, and really talk about how we can help people create better content in less time so they can really focus on what they love, man. Let's go. Absolutely. So, hey, man, I did your show a couple of weeks ago. And just so we make sure that we give the plug, that is, give us the name of that show. Yeah, my show is the After Hours Entrepreneur, bringing on top experts just like yourself, Pat Flynn, Jasmine Starr, Evan Carmichael, the list goes on and on. And really what we focus on, Casanova, is how to evolve with the new technology, the new ways to communicate. Like if you're still handing out, you know, like little flyers and putting up billboards, it's not going to work, you know? So how can we actually stay top of mind, build no like, and trust so that we can drive more leads, man? That's, that's the passion, bro. That's what the show's all about. Absolutely. And we had a lot of fun doing your show. One of the things that I love that we talked about was cutting edge. And I know we mentioned in the beginning. Well, first off, before we get into all of that, because that's the meat and potatoes. We want people to stick around for that. But I always love to start off the show. And so I'm sure that anybody listening, watching right now, they're probably like, what is he doing? Why is he switching it up? It's because I love to start off the show and I compare us as entrepreneurs, thought leaders and change makers to superheroes. And the reason being is because we're constantly flying around the world we're putting on our cape and we're trying to solve some of the world's biggest problems. And so my question to you is, and it's the same question that I always pose for a lot of people that see you on Instagram or they see you on YouTube or see you in clubhouse. They see you as a superhero. Why is it because it looks like you have it all figured out, but we know behind every S on the chest and every Superman, there's always that Clark Kent guy. And a lot of the times we don't really know how to describe who exactly is Clark Kent. And so my question to you is behind that S on the chest and what we know is Mr. Savant, tell us who is that Clark Kent when it comes to Mark? Yeah, so this is a great point. And, you know, you can get really caught up in the numbers and the followers and the views and all that. But I think that the real key to entrepreneurship and success is the person that fails the most times wins, right? Because if you keep failing, it means you're still in the game, you know? So that's the way I attack it. So really, I think when I started my journey into social media management, podcast coaching, digital media uh, help is, is was all about family, you know? And it's kind of interesting. We rescheduled this because you had your family at the zoo, you know, and having a great time and it went long. I'm all about that life, you know? Mm. I, I'm trying to build these processes, these systems, build out a team so that I can spend more time with the people I love, my wife, my two kids. I got a two-year-old, I got a five-year-old. And I, I think that that's what's really important you know it can get really easy to get caught up in work 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 and that's important you know but if if you miss out on the these these precious moments you know your kid's first goal the soccer game or your graduation from kindergarten or whatever you're, you're missing the bus right you're kind of losing focus so that's really what i'm all about on the back end I love it. I love it, man. And I think anybody can appreciate that because just like you said, we're all trying to solve some problems, but at the same time, you don't want to lose focus of the biggest problem that you could put in your own space, which is that problem that you can't get time back and you've missed so much of those precious moments, right? Yeah. Because we all only know be for one time. Yeah. yeah, well, that's exactly right, man. And they grow up quick, you know, but it's, it's kind of like something we all understand. We know we have to be on social media. We know it's a powerful way to build know, like, and trust. We know it's a powerful way to stay top of mind. I mean, there's so many realtors out there. There's so many accountants, so many lawyers, so many insurance agents. But, you know, if you can stay top of mind and provide valuable information, then, you know, you're going to be the person that they call. You know, the, the problem is that that hamster wheel never ends. The carrot just keeps moving, you know? So how can we create that content? How can we build that know, like, and trust in less time so we can really focus on our purpose and the things that we love? Yeah, and I think that's a perfect segment into it of how exactly do we create valuable 
content right now and not only valuable content but content that sticks out because the world is as we know it is getting noisier and noisier there's a new platform always coming out there's now TikTok. we connected on clubhouse right and then we connect we connect we stayed connected on instagram and then you know obviously we did the show so now for somebody that's saying hey there's a lot of content out there how do i even make my content stick out how do i make my content valuable what does that look like Poof, man, this is a big question. And, and honestly, it, it kind of depends. It depends on your business. It depends on your goals, right? If your goal is to be an influencer and to get a bunch of subscribers on YouTube, it's going to be different than, hey, Mark, I just want to fill my inbox with people that are interested in what I'm doing, you know? So it, it kind of depends on the specifics of the person. And I, I think at the, at the end of the day, Casanova I, in Dream Nation, I think what's really important is that you're always trying new things but you're not obsessed with the new things. You know what I mean? So I think that my rule, and I picked this up from Pat Flynn, and I thought this was really important, is spend 80% of your time doing what has proven to work and 20% of your time experimenting with the new thing. You know, mm. Because if you're not actually carving out time to try the new thing, you're gonna miss out, right? You, you always gotta be trying the new thing. And for me, I think some of the biggest opportunities right now <clears throat> is a short form vertical video Okay. It's super easy to create. You can batch produce it and then you can show up on multiple platforms and, and platforms like YouTube shorts, Instagram reels are, you're getting a huge push because you're trying the new thing. And, and again, this is important, right? Because when you're trying the new thing, the algorithms are going to favor you. The social media platforms are going to favor you because they want to, they want to test it. Right? They want to test, how does this work? What, how is the audience engagement? Are people watching longer? Are they binging? You know, so, so trying that new thing is, you're really giving the platform what they want to see. And again, super easy to repurpose, super easy to shoot. Like you can shoot an entire month's worth of video in like an hour. You know what I mean? I love it. Um, now, yeah. let me ask though, because there's a realtor that's listening at this right now or somebody that's in the real estate industry um, that's listening at this right now that they say, okay, I get it. But what type of even content, where do I even know what to post? Like, how do I film this 30 days or even two weeks? I'm staring at a whiteboard. What does that look like? Yeah, <laughs> so that's a good question. I mean, for me, I think when I'm creating that content, I want to try to solve someone's problem. I want to give someone a quick win, right? So again, as a realtor, for example, you're, there's going to be questions that you get time in, over and over and over again, it's the same question, right? So why not create content that addresses that common question, that common concern, right? Hey, yo, Casanova, what's going on with the housing market? Prices are way up. What if I buy a house and then I lose, you know, it loses its value overnight? Like, how does that, you know, so I think answering those questions is a great way to build that know, like, and trust. Give that person a quick win. It brings them into your atmosphere. So I think that's a good place to start. Okay. Cool. So we want to answer questions for our deal audience is what I'm getting. So basically, if you are in the luxury market right now, or if you're trying to tap into the luxury market, then you're maybe doing research or you're looking at, okay, well, what are the problems that people in the luxury market are having? So yeah. I'm solving it directly for a pain point for that ideal customer, avatar, client, whatever you like to say. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And the other value to this is that if you continue to get the same question over and over again, why keep repeating the same answer over and over and over again? So what I found, and I'm, I'm huge into podcasting, we, could, we can kind of get into that podcasting and repurposing. That's another huge way to build know, like, and trust, right? Um, but what I actually started on YouTube is because people kept asking the same questions over and over and over again. So I just started recording videos to answer those questions. I post them up on YouTube, right? And now whenever someone DMs me on Instagram and says, hey, Mark, how do I get more downloads on my podcast? Or, hey, Mark, how can I improve the quality of my videos? Says, hey, I have an entire video on YouTube. Go check it out. You know, And now I've got over 600,000 views on the channel. And it's, it's because you, you're answering those questions. You're hel actually helping people. And then you bring them, again, into your atmosphere. You're saving time because you don't have to go into this back and forth. Say, hey, check out this video. And then that'll... That'll kind of let you know my initial thoughts. Then maybe we can hop on a call and we can go a level deeper. We can talk about what your specific need is, you know, answer yeah. the general questions in video and then get to the specifics when that person wants to learn more.
I, I, I really dig that, man. And the reason why I say that is because not only does it, it, it solves the problem for you of having to regurgitate the same thing over and over again, where then you start to lose interest in talking about it. But the other thing is from that prospect or even the person who doesn't even know you yet, but they come across your YouTube channel or your podcast or whatever, it instantly paints you as the credit or as the authority. Yes. It gives you that credibility, right? Already in their eyes because you're making content on this and then they can binge on more of your content. So then when you give them that offer to reach out, it feels like it's a no brainer. Well, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And it takes time. You know, you're not just going to post up your first video and then everyone's going to see you as an expert, right? But it comes with that consistency. It comes with leveraging the best practices, right? How are you starting your videos? What keywords are you using? Are people actually searching for those keywords? How do your titles look? How's your lighting? Like there's a lot of small things that you can, you can absolutely learn. It might take you a few years to learn it, or, you know, you can work with someone like myself or some of the other experts out there who can really fast track you. So instead of starting at point A, you're starting at point, you know, S, right, for superhero, right? And then, and then you can really start to scale more quickly, uh, get more views more quickly and, and kind of skip all that, that time. Yeah, man, so much value there. Now, let's transition it just like to what you said is podcasting. You know, I found podcasting as just a way for me to find an audience because I didn't already have one in the beginning. And I think that's where a lot of people are starting out. For you, what has been the benefits of podcasting? Why have you chose to go all in on podcasting and create your medium around podcasting? It's a great question. It, and there's a lot of advantages to podcasting. And when you when you start your podcast, you start creating the the content, having the conversations. I really think it is important that going into it, you kind of have an end game. You have a goal. Like, do you actually want to be a broadcaster? Do you want to build the know, like, and trust? Are you trying to build your network? Are you trying to get on more sales calls? I've, I've had podcasters who want to bring me on their podcast just so they can try to sell me on their product or service, you know? So again, there's, there's a lot of different things that go into that strategy. Um, for me, building the network is huge. Your network is the, your net worth, right? We've, we've all heard mm -hmm. that. The, the other thing I think that's really valuable about a podcast and really something that I focus on is... How can I build out the infrastructure so that I can just go in for a 30 minute conversation with an awesome human being like yourself and then create tons of content around that? You know, so a 30 minute conversation could end up being hours and hours and hours of rewatchable, bingeable content for people. Um, you know, because again, we all know we need to create more content for social media. We already talked about a vertical video strategy, but leveraging a podcast like this, a video podcast like this with some editing and some with a small team behind you, you could just pump out hours of content across multiple platforms to really build that engagement, reach new people. And again, build that note. It's really about staying top of mind. Cause I, yeah. I'll tell you, I get every day. Someone tells me they're a realtor. When you're thinking about selling your home, let's, let's go, you know, let's sign the contract. So it's really who I'm going to go to is the person who is top of mind, you know? Yeah. So are you staying top of mind? No, I, I really dig that as well. Now, talk to me about if somebody says that, listen, I don't even know where to start. I don't have the money to be paying uh, even a small team, right? I don't even have any listings coming in right now. For me, how do I start to create the content, but more importantly, redistribute and repurpose it on a smaller budget? Like, do you have any tips or tricks on that? Is there any apps that somebody should be looking at of how they could create it? Oh, I love this. I love going super tactical. That's, that's what I'm all about. And listen, if you want to go level deeper, DM me at Mark Savant Media on Instagram. That's Mark Savant Media on Instagram. DM me code word Casanova. DM me at, DM me Casanova. That's the keyword, all right? Because I'll, I'll know exactly where you came from and, and what you're looking to understand and, and know, right? So the, the answer is you can absolutely start a podcast on a shoestring budget. Like you, you probably want to buy a, a nice mic like you got there. It doesn't need to be crazy. Like you can buy all of your hardware for less than a hundred bucks. You know, and, and you can really just start with just your phone, but I would recommend buying a, at least a decent mic for under a hundred bucks. Um, you can use a program like anchor anchor is hundred percent free for your hosting. And what we mean by hosting is that's where you're uploading all of your audio files to, and then it pumps it out across iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, et cetera, et cetera. You can start that completely free. You know, I, I recommend that if you're going to take it seriously, that you, you actually pay for a service. Like, like Buzzsprout, I actually have a free trial. So if, if you're interested in that, I can, I can hook you up with a free trial of Buzzsprout. Um, 
that's a good way to go. You can actually record your videos, your, your content with something like Zoom, 100% free to get started on Zoom. Although again, if you're gonna take it seriously, you might wanna invest, yada, yada. But just getting started, like $100 mic, free hosting, free recording. Uh, you can edit your audio in Audacity, 100% free. So you, know, you can absolutely get started on a shoestring budget. I actually started editing videos just with my phone, no mic. I downloaded a free program called Kind Master on my phone, and I just started playing with editing. You know, So uh, your goal is to eventually hire a team and start outsourcing stuff, but it, you, know, there's, you can absolutely get started for basically for free. It's just a matter of doing it smart and intentionally. And, and again, that's a very common question that I have on my YouTube channel. So, you know, that's yeah. you know, something I think so about. Definitely. So when, when someone now that they've, they've gotten a couple episodes out there, what have you found has been the best way for you to be able to get credibility with your podcast? Because there's a lot of podcasts out there. I think now yeah. it just went over like 1.4 million. But in the beginning... Right. There was 750,000, but then there was, you know, 30 million blogs. And, and there is obviously how many ever YouTube channels? Everyone has a YouTube channel. So how did you find when you first started, how did you gain credibility with your podcast to really start to scale it up and get the guests that you were getting? Was it just the outreach part or did you have to have a more tactical approach to get these guys on your podcast like Pat Flynn? It's, it's about consistency. Is, is really what it's about. You know, you're not going to have credibility day one. That would be like walking into the gym and saying, everyone look at me, I'm going to deadlift 500 pounds. Like it's not going to happen, you know? So for me, the, the most important thing for building up the credibility is consistency. I think the next thing is when it comes to your podcast, you don't really want to be selling a lot, right? You want to be saying, what are the questions that people are asking? What are the biggest problems that my listener has and how can I solve it? You know, and again, it's about giving people quick wins. It's about going deep and, and you end up building no like and trust pretty, pretty quickly. If you're, if you're just being transparent, if you're being honest, the other thing I think Casanova that's, that's really overlooked is being, uh, being authentic and letting your personality shine through. I, when I first started, you know, and you look at like old school broadcasters, they're, they're sitting up straight and they have, you know, you have the right type of voice and you know the right questions to ask, but let your personality shine through. What makes you different, you know? And because people will come for the guest, that's the halo effect. People will come for the guest, but they stay for the host, right? So mm. you absolutely need to let your personality run through. Don't be dry. Don't be boring. Don't think that you're for everybody. You're not. You're not for everybody. You're for the people that love your personality. And I think that when people start picking up on that personality, it, it, it just, it's like, it's like magic. Things start to catch fire. And it, I think that's, that's a big one. So I just gave, I think five great ways to, to build it, but. Oh yeah, yeah absolutely. Right. And I, I got a, you know, a professional stealing, but I love that. I've never heard that before, right? They come for the guests, but they stay for the host, right? Yeah. And that, that's a really good one right there. So I think somebody else is, is, is listening or watching this right now. And they're like, Oh, I got to remember that because I, I would have definitely agree. Like that's how you'll find your tribe. We all think yes. that we look dumb on camera. We all think that we sound dumb on the microphone. It's like, Oh, I don't like my voice. And I'm sure anybody listening at this is like, I know I definitely don't want to hear my voice. And what's crazy about it is my whole life. Like people have always said like, man, you great. Like your energy. And I've never liked my voice. Um, and now it's, but what's crazy about it is other people they'll feed off of your energy. So just like you said, an energy doesn't have to be uh, so like high energy, but it could just be your positivity or your wittiness. And, you know, there's one there's a show out there, Mixergy. Have you ever heard Mixergy? I've heard of it. I, I don't think I've consumed it, but I have heard of it. Yeah, so Andrew Warner, and we won't stay on this topic too long, but he was one of the first people, just like Pat Flynn, but they have such different personalities. And if you get on Mixergy, he definitely like grills you. He's all in your business. Well, well, how much money did you lose on that? And he's just got such a different type of personality. But his show is one of the top, I would say 10, 50, at least 50, but probably top 10 business shows, but because of the way that he comes about it. So he's found his tribe through that. And I think that it goes to your point of just be you, show up as your authentic self, and there's going to be somebody out there that says, yo, I rock with him or her just because they can feel that you guys come from the same cloth. Yeah, I heard Gary V talk about this a little bit, who's just an ultra popular uh, marketing coach, expert, you know, and 
one of the things that he talked about, and this is really great advertising strategy is historically when you're making an ad, you kind of have to appeal to as many people as one at the mm -hmm. same time, right? Because you're putting up a billboard, you're making a TV commercial, radio commercial. So you kind of have to create really broad stroke type of content. But in this world where you can run Facebook ads that are specifically targeted to a demographic, a location, an interest, you can get super, super tactical with your content. You know, we're, we're kind of going in the advertising world right now, but like you can record, let's say a 30 second ad that's more general, but then you record these five second intros that say something like, Hey, San Francisco buyer. Hey, Austin, Texas buyer. Hey, LA, but you know, so you can get super, super tactical so that you're speaking. It feels like when I see that video pop up, I'm like, Holy crap. This is specifically made for me. This is catered specifically for me. And right. once you start practicing and getting, you know, getting deep on this, it's, it's like, again, it's just super powerful. And that's one of the new technologies we can really leverage is this, this, uh, you know, this knowledge about who exactly you want to speak to. Yeah. And that's so critical. And I know, just like you said, we're getting into the world of advertising, but in the world of real estate, that is what you're doing all day long. Right. Yeah. You're advertising yourself, your brand, you're advertising your listings, you're advertising, hey, my buyer needs a three bedroom, two bath home. You're constantly advertising. So he or she who spends the most to acquire a new customer, right, that they win because at the end of the day, attention is the new currency. So you have to figure out ways to gain more attention. And just like you said, as you continue to put out different types of content, those people are going to say, Hey, he is this time he's speaking to me. So I got to take action on it or she's speaking to me. So I got to take action. So again, so valuable for you. Do you feel, cause here's a, here was a rush. And we talked about this in the beginning, but TikTok took off re not TikTok, clubhouse took off really yeah. fast. Once it caught the notion. But I would say that over, depending on when you're watching this, TikTok has really slowed down now. Um, and there's new people catching the wave. And of course, I don't think that it's really opened up to Android yet, has it? It actually just opened up to Android uh, from the time of recording. It's about seven or eight days ago. Yeah, so it is open, Android got users. It. And uh, if you want an invite, what I got you. you. I got, I think, 100 invites for my for my club. So, yeah. You You got what? I've got a bunch of invites because I, I have a you know fairly sizable club on Clubhouse. Yeah. And so because when you run it, so this is a week ago, way deep on Clubhouse. I love the platform. It's, it is probably one of the best ways to build your network. But yeah, mm -hmm. if, you, if you'd like an invite, anyone out there listening, if you want an invite to Clubhouse at Mark Svant Media, code word Casanova, I got you. Got it. So you, you are a big fan of Clubhouse still. Uh, what have you found that has been the best way to gain traction on Clubhouse? Because it's, again, it's another noisy platform. And, and if you're like, okay, I, I hop on here and I find myself consuming a lot, but I'm not actually taking action on it, that obviously doesn't work. So how have yeah. you found ways to break through? It's, I mean, it's the same rule across every social media platform. In, you have to create. You have to create. And on Clubhouse, it's a little bit scary, you know, because you're getting on a stage. And the way you create in Clubhouse, if, if you're not familiar, for everyone who's not familiar, it's audio only, okay? There's no texting people. There's no sharing videos or photos. It is all audio. It's conversations, just like we're having right now, okay? And that can be scary. Getting on a stage and speaking with four or five people that you really admire. There's a hundred people in the audience listening to the words that are coming out of your mouth. It's, it could be scary, right? But if you want success on clubhouse, it's about getting on stage. It's about speaking. It's about sharing either valuable questions that are going to extract valuable information, or it's about giving that valuable information. So you can, again, build no like, and trust. And it's, it's really, really powerful Casanova because when you're creating content on most platforms, or if, if your fans are consuming content on most platforms, they're just like looking at a picture of you eating a hot dog yesterday or something like that, you know, but on clubhouse, they're actually hearing the words coming from your mouth in real time, you know, mm. and you're able to give people, we talked about quick wins and how important giving people a quick win is when someone could come up on stage and ask you a specific question about, hey, I'd like to get 10% more for my home when I sell it. And you can say, hey, if you just clean up your listing or use this keyword on your MLS or, you know, try painting your front door, 
you can give someone quick wins and they're like, whoa, this person just changed my life in two minutes. I need to know more, you know? So that's one of the biggest, I think it's something that it's hard to really understand this until you've actually done it and executed it. And I can tell you for every time I go on a clubhouse stage, every platform grows my LinkedIn, my Instagram, I get more podcast downloads, more people go into my YouTube page. It's, it's, it's very, very powerful. I think a lot of people said it was, there was a lot of hype around. It's all hype. It's all hype, but there's something powerful when you can have a quick conversation with someone, solve their problem quickly and they become hooked. They want more. They're, they're hungry, you know? Yeah. So for somebody who's listening right now and they say, Okay, you talked to me about podcasting. Should I just do my podcast on Clubhouse or should I be looking at the anchor? Because there was at one point a lot of people were wondering if Clubhouse would, you know, take a dent or, or kind of even replace the world as we knew it of podcasting. Hmm. Well, there's, so they're different things, right? The main difference in Clubhouse and podcasting is that on Clubhouse, it's you know it's it's very much in real time. So the conversations you have are just like um, going to the coffee shop and have a conversation, or may or it depends on the type of room. Some rooms are more like it's an event, right, where you have a panel of experts and then people are coming up to the mic and asking a question. So it depends on the type of room, but it's it's there today, it's gone tomorrow. In podcasting, you're there in perpetuity. I my, the first show that I started is called the Awesome Dad Show. Again big on fatherhood. I think it's really important. It's a problem. We don't, we don't discuss enough. Fathers are immensely important to, I think our, our nation, our children, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you can still listen to the awesome dad show. It's hosted on anchor. It's completely free and it's there forever. It's there forever where, so there's, there's some value there. You can kind of build up this momentum. And if someone hears you on clubhouse and they want more, they can go binge on your content from your podcast. So I think there's a real symbiosis there in the way these two platforms connect. And, and just to go just one level deeper, I've actually started recording some of my rooms on clubhouse, not every room, but some of the rooms so that, you know, those people that are getting involved, well, now they feel like they're actually part of the podcast. They feel right. like they're actually contributing and, and that's a good way to kind of bring people in to your atmosphere even a little more. Yeah. And, and I think that that's super valuable, right? Think about it. You said a keyword, it's like an event. So any real estate agent um, that's, that is have a good following on Clubhouse, or even if you're trying to build your following on Clubhouse, imagine you bringing in a home inspector, you bringing in a loan officer, and then you also broadcasting this across your social media, your LinkedIn, your everything saying, hey, you know, we're going to do this virtual event in Clubhouse and you can get enough people that comes on. Well, then yeah. you get those potential buyers or sellers, especially if you market it locally in your area, right? All of your Facebook friends and things like that to say, hey, especially if you're in my hometown, pop on here we're going to talk about all of the things the nine steps to buying your first home even in uh, a crazy market like this and now all of a sudden you get those people to raise their hands and they say hey well i'm struggling with this or this or whatever it is and you're like yeah dm me offline i also yep. can help you with that and so it's another powerful tool but just off of that you might have walked away with five or six leads and you did it all for free it's it's I got to be honest, I've been in this social media atmosphere for several years. Nothing, nothing, nothing has driven more leads, more people into my, my, I keep using the word atmosphere. I never use that word, but I keep driving more and more people into my world and my, into my atmosphere because of clubhouse. Because again, we keep talking about this. You give them that quick win. And after that quick win, you say, Hey, you want to go deeper? Let's talk on DM me on Instagram. We'll, we'll go a level deeper. Um, so it's, it's really powerful. And the other thing I think that's, that's different about clubhouse is the ability to network because you can DM that big celebrity real estate agent or title agent or attorney or whoever on Instagram all day, but you're going to have a really hard time breaking through because they're getting hundreds and hundreds of DMS. Lots of them are robots or spammers or advertisers or whatever, but on clubhouse, you can have a conversation with someone and they know, okay, this person's legit. They know what they're talking about. They're not a robot. And then at the end, you can say, hey, you know, I'd love to take this conversation deeper. Maybe you can come on my podcast. Is it cool if I shoot you a message on Instagram? Or is it cool if I message you on LinkedIn? And they're like, yeah, that's okay. Let's, let's have a conversation. Let's go a level deeper, right? So it's a good way of standing out and just really connecting with someone on a deeper level than just an Instagram DM. Facts, facts. All right. There's so much value, man. This has been phenomenal conversation. I just want to wrap it up with a, a couple questions. 
And the first question that I have, I always ask this question. Um, I used to phrase it in a different way. I used to ask if there is one thing that you would change and people would always come back and say they wouldn't change anything because it made them who they are today. But I kind of call BS on that a lot because I'm like, if we could go back and we could change one thing, we would all change something, right? Like yeah. that's my thoughts, my opinion on it, but I get a different perspective. So I've now found a different way to word this. So if there was one thing that you wish, since you're so much wiser now on your journey um, of, of where you have been over the last 10, 15 years, if there was one thing that you wish that you would have implemented sooner to accelerate your path on your dream and your journey, what would that one thing be? I would have started sooner. I would have started experimenting sooner. I would have started trying new things sooner because it's so easy to get caught up in this. Well, I missed the boat on podcasting. It's going to be too hard to start a podcast or, you know, YouTube's been around for 10 years and it's too late. Uh, Bitcoin. I don't want to go into Bitcoin and crypto because I just don't know a lot about it. But how many people are like, eh, it's too late to go in on crypto. I, I was, I, it's funny. I actually put out a post a couple of years ago where I said, Hey, I'm going to buy some crypto. I'm going to buy some Bitcoin. Everyone's like, Oh, it's too high. It's not worth it. You know, but now it's up like 300% from when I, when I bought in. Right. So it's, it's really easy to kick the can and say, I missed the boat. But I think that if you commit yourself to trying new things regularly, and, and that would be the one thing I would have changed. I would have said, I would have stopped kicking the can and I would have started creating and trying new things sooner. God, what do you think started to change the needle for you? Was it a book that you read? Was it a, a coaching group that you got a part of? Was it a mastermind? It, it was actually my grandfather. So I was, I went to, and I was visiting my grandfather and my grandmother and my granddad said, Hey, Mark, come over here, come sit down with me. And he, he sits back in his big red easy chair. He pulls out this big binder and he starts flipping through the pages of it. And there's a bunch of newspaper clippings and journal entries and you know, all these different things that he had done in his life. It's like, this is that old blue car. I love this old Chevy, you know? And I'm thinking to myself, one day I'm going to do this with my grandkids, you know, and, and what do I want my binder to look like? You know, mm. and that was kind of like this aha moment because you can choose to just coast and, and just hope and pray that things work out for you, or you can start focusing on being better than yesterday and how can I improve people's lives? And for me, it's, it's, it's about legacy and about thinking about what do you want your binder to look like when you're talking to your grandkids? Wow. That's super powerful. Very powerful. And, you know, and, and I think anybody who's watching, listening, still rocking with us right now, they had that in their mind. That was just wow. Like when yeah. there's going to come a time where I'm 40, 50, 60 years old and they're going to say, oh, well, tell me about this. And do you have a story around that? Did you ever experience that? Right. Where they say grandma, or grandpa, did you ever go to Germany? Did you ever go to China? Did you ever, you know, do this? Did you ever jump out of a plane? And then you're going to have to, you know, really think about it yourself to say, did I have that opportunity? And we all know that we have these opportunities. They come to us every yeah. single day, but do we capitalize on them or do we find a reason to not do it? Uh, no, well, back in my day, they didn't, but then you have to bring that energy. Right. And it's like, oh, well, that, I'm sorry about that. And it's like, Ugh. but then if you go back, I, oh yeah, I definitely did it. Look at this picture. Right. And they're like, well, what was it like? And then you, you relive that moment. And it's all just good energy. So that's that's very powerful. It had my mind definitely thinking. And so thank you for sharing that, my brother. Um, the last question I have for you, man, I'm sure, first off, I want to be the first one to say thank you. I'm sure if no one else has told you today, uh, I want to be the first one to say that you have definitely inspired me. And not only that, um, I want to be the first one to say I appreciate you for taking your time to come on here and share your wisdom with us. And there's somebody else out there that's inspired, that's watching, still listening at this. And they have that, that, that want to do what you've done. They have that want to get on social media. They have that want to build that network, but they have that little thoughts in their head and those little thoughts to say that they're not smart enough. They're not strong enough, or maybe they just don't have enough resources. What's the one final thing that you would leave this person with to get them to just take action? It's really easy to overestimate what you can do in one year, but underestimate what you can do in 10 years, you know? Mm. So I think it's important to have a vision moving forward, but if you just focus on, I'm just gonna be a little bit better each day. It it's, it's exponential the way it's not linear. 
it's it's a hockey stick. It's exponential. So don't get so caught up in what John Smith or what Jane Smith is doing. Focus on you. Focus on how can I just be a little bit better than yesterday? When I started, people were looking at me like I was crazy. I said, Mark, you don't know anything about broadcasting. Mark, you don't know anything about social media. Mark, you don't know anything about fatherhood. You don't know anything about podcasting. I said, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to learn. And I'm going to be a little bit better than yesterday. And if you take on that mentality, if you surround yourself with the right people, you know, and if you're here rocking with Mark Savant and Casanova, Dream Nation, you are in the right place at the right time. I know you've got the right mentality. So go out and just focus on being a little bit better each day. Fail as many times as you can, because if you're failing, it means you're still in the game, you know, and, and that that's my mentality, man. I love it. I love it, my brother. Well, we're going to make sure that we put all of the links in the show notes to everything that you mentioned today. But for anybody who wants to stay connected with you, one last time, tell us where can they find you at? You can find me all over the place at Mark Savant Media. You can listen to the After Hours Entrepreneur, tons of valuable information to help you create better content in less time so you can really focus on what you love. Uh, but hit me up at Mark Savant Media on Instagram, code word Casanova. At, at Mark Savant Media on Instagram, code word Casanova. I'd love to connect. There it is. Well, I look forward to hearing the feedback. And man, again, this has been such a valuable conversation for me. And I'm sure anybody that's listening, watching, um, remember Dream Nation, just as he said, you have to take action. You have to get in the game. You have to just start somewhere because if you don't, that dream that you have, and we all have a dream, it will only merely be a fantasy if you do not mm -hmm. take action on it. That's all for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. That's all we got for this episode. Thank you for sticking around. That truly means a lot to me. And hopefully that means that we delivered massive value on this one. If you haven't already, the way that you could say thank you to myself and the team is just by heading over to iTunes and leaving a review and a rating. That's what iTunes loves to see. That's how we get out there even more. And I would definitely, definitely be grateful for it. I know the team would as well. Do me a favor and head on over to dreamnationpodcast.com. That's where you're going to be able to find all of the resources that we talked about in today's episode, as well as more exclusive content. And you'll also be able to sign up to our email list where we have more exclusive content. And we always love to hear the feedback from you all because you're our tribe. So remember, in the dream we trust, we'll see you on the flip side.